Okay, Lady Swatch a lot is here and she's ready to swatch a lot. Hello everyone. I don't know why I started like that, but um, I don't know, it seemed appropriate because we are going to swatch a lot. So we're going to start today, by the way, this is the second part of the swatching from the really big art haul I did. Um, when did I do that? End of September, I think. Um, so I've decided that I'm going to swatch them on white paper and black paper because it's interesting to see how different they look on the different papers. Um, colours look really different on black paper, unsurprisingly. Um, so we're going to be using the Stonehenge paper I shared with you in the art haul video. Um, I did manage actually to get it off the block. You know, I was worried about that. I don't like it when they're gummed all the way around the edge. Um, I prefer like a pad of paper where it's just gummed at the top. But um, yeah, I used the palette knife and it came off really well without damaging the paper underneath. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, this paper here, sorry, it's got something on it, um, is the Etcher Cold Press Wood Pulp Pad. <laughs> Actually, that's a block as well. They call it a pad, I think, but it's a block. Um, so yeah, two cold press watercolour papers. This one is super thick. This one is 600 GSM. So if you're looking for a really thick watercolour paper and a black one at that, the Stonehenge one is the one you want. Um, okay, let's start. What should we start with? Let's have a look at some of the colours I have here. So I bought a lot of acrylic gouache because this is a medium I use probably more than any other, um, certainly at the moment. And I bought a few colours that I've had before. I'll tell you which ones they are when we swatch them. And quite a few new ones, some of which hadn't been in stock on Jackson's for a while. Um, and I'd had my eye on them. So when they came in stock, I decided to get them. I might have a few colours here that are a bit similar to each other. Because they're new to me, I don't know until I try them. Um, so we will see. We'll see how similar or different they are. And I probably won't, once I've used them, renew all of these. I'll probably just stick to a slightly more limited palette. <laughs> I'm just busy trying so many different colours at the moment to see what I really like. And then when I've used them up, if I really love them, I buy them again. And if not... I don't. So wow, it really does look like quite a few here. Okay, I think we should start with the paler ones. The more orangey earth tones, because I think a lot of these, yeah, I think pretty much all of them are blues and blues, greens and greys. I have a large tube of the Holbein Titanium White here. I'm not going to swatch this because we all know what white looks like, but I can recommend it. It's the white I use most often. Um, I have tried, was it Chinese white? I didn't like it quite as much. And um, the Turner whites are quite good, but I prefer this one. Really good mixing white, very opaque. If you're after a white, I would recommend that one. So we're gonna put that to one side. And I think what I'll do, let's just move these out of the way. There's not much space on the desk at the moment. I've got loads of stuff on the desk, which you can't see. So I framed this so you can't see all of my mess. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll start with, let's start with pastel sand. So what I'm going to do, I should tell you what this is really, shouldn't I? This is the Turner Acryl Gouache and this is from their pastel range. So I'm going to just put a bit up there and a bit up there and we'll have a look at pastel sand. So this is one I've wanted to try for a while. Where's my brush? Okay, so I'm going to be using a very cheap graduate brush by De La Rowney. Um, Cheap but good brushes, actually. I have quite a few of these. So I'm not going to mix these with water. I'm just going to do a not particularly neat <laughs> swatch here. People keep asking me whether I could swatch my entire acrylic gouache collection because I have quite a few colours from both the different ranges and 
I think that could be quite an interesting video for those of you who are into acrylic gouache or who want to get into using it and would like to see accurate uh, depictions of the swatches because the digital swatches um, on like Jackson's or something aren't particularly accurate. It's much better to see someone actually swatching them on video. So if you want, I can do that. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in, um, in seeing my entire collection. That would be one heck of a video because I do have quite a few. Oh wow, this is a lot brighter than the strip on the tube. So this one is pastel orange. So this is the Turner um, acryl gouache again. So let's just put a little bit there and a little bit there. It's rather a pretty colour actually. Yeah, I expected it to not be as bright as this, but I actually like it. Yeah, pretty. It's almost, looks almost coral to me actually, rather than a pastel orange, <laughs> but on here actually looks quite a bit paler. It's interesting to see them on the different coloured papers. So these are both new colours to me. The next one we're going to swatch, actually should we do, no, let's do the gold. So this is pale gold and I ordered this thinking it wasn't a metallic. I thought it was just going to be like a gold yellow. Um, but it's actually metallic and um, as I said in the haul video it actually cost I think about three pounds more for that tube and I didn't realise because I was ordering quite a few different ones. Um, I didn't particularly need a gold but I will use it now I have it and I actually have had an idea some paintings containing some metallic gold but I wasn't actually going to use um, necessarily acrylic gouache to do those paintings um, probably would have been watercolour because I have some nice metallic watercolours as well but oh but you know what we're gonna go with it and I won't let it go to waste, don't worry. Sorry about these swatches, they're not very neat, are they? I'm doing this at a bit of a funny angle because I've got both of the papers on here. I feel I'm being a bit cack-handed. It's actually a really nice metallic. I hold that up. Can you see that? It's very pretty gold, actually. It's not too in your face, not too blingy. So this one is my old favourite, Burnt Sienna. And my tube is getting quite low, so it was time to get a new one. This is a colour I use quite a lot. Just such a lovely colour. Very rich. Oh, it looks good against the black, doesn't it? I think I may have squeezed out a bit much, really, from that tube. A little goes quite a long way. Mmm, that's nice. I like that on both the black and the white. Right, I think next we're going to do... Let's do the blues. Okay, so the first one we're going to swatch is my old favourite misty blue which I'm going to do them both on a separate line separate row um, this is one of my favorite colors and has been for a very long time when I swatch it I hope you'll see why it's so beautiful it's um, quite pale almost like a gray blue or a blue gray blue gray <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of um, the steel grey luminance pencil or like their Payne's Grey 30% or something like that. But I use this one a lot. I really like it for, like if I'm doing one of my birds, I really like it for the background. And it makes a lovely sky colour if you don't want something that's too bright. 
If like me, you prefer a bit more subtle tea, it's a very good colour to have, but look how different it looks on the black and the white. So on the black, it almost looks just like a tinted white, but on the white, it looks very much like a blue grey, grey blue. Which pigments does it have? Oh, it does have a black. It has a black, a blue and a white. Really lovely colour, misty blue. Okay, the next is something that's new to me, and this is another one of the Turner ones. Sorry, did I say that was a Holbein one? I mean, you can see anyway, can't you? Because I'm showing you the tubes, but um, I like to be clear. <laughs> so this one, the Turner one, and it's from their pastel range again, and it's pastel lavender. Ooh, this one really is a bit more of a violet tone, but very pretty. Again, it looks a lot brighter than the strip on the tube. Oh, that's lovely. I'm trying to think whether I've got anything that's similar to this in acrylic gouache. I've been trying to share some acrylic gouache videos with my patrons because it's a medium, as I say, that I use a lot and um, I'm often asked about it. So I've been sharing my tips, my techniques, the way I layer, the way I create texture. Um, again, really interesting to see the difference on the black paper compared to the white. So the Turner Japanese range is slightly textured, so it has this slightly gritty texture to it, um, which is supposed to mimic, I think, traditional Japanese paints and I actually rather like it. I didn't know whether I would at first, but I really do. So this one is the Japanesque Sky Blue. So let's see how this looks. Well, this is a true summer sky colour, isn't it? I'll hold these up closer, by the way, at the end. So you can get a really good look at the colours. I think I keep squeezing a bit too much out of the tube. I like that actually, it's quite subtle. It's not super bright in your face. Sky blue, is it? Very nice. I really like the Japanese range. Um, I have a lot of the colors in that range because I bought a set, which I don't often do. Last year I bought a set of the colours, um, I think they were about 45 maybe. And they're really nice, they're kind of slightly more muted than their normal range. And uh, yeah, lots of really interesting subtle colours in that range. But I didn't have the sky blue, so I thought I would add that because it looked good. And I do actually really like it. it looks nice on both papers, doesn't it? Right, the next one we're gonna go for, I think we'll do the Pale Aqua Holbein. That one feels slightly runnier. So this is another one I don't have. Another very lovely color. This one looks, um, compared to the others, it looks like it's got a slight green tone to me. What pigments does that have in it? PB15, PY42, PW6. Oh, it has a blue, a yellow and a white. That's why it looks slightly green. Like it's got a green hint to it, which is nice. Again, this actually looks less bright and a bit more subtle, which I'm very pleased about. Oh, I like it with the burnt sienna. Right, now this one, I'm not sure how bright this is going to be. This is the Holbein Sky Blue. Oh gosh, this is totally different <laughs> to the Japanese Sky Blue. I don't know why. Why did I just do that? Oh, probably because I've got those three. Mm. I was thinking I could have carried on on that line, but let's see. 
which pigment has this got? PB15 and PG7, so a blue and a green. It's funny how they call this one sky blue. I would not say this is a sky blue at all. It's probably a good blue to have nonetheless. Oh, that's a big swatch. Yep, I'm still squeezing too much out, aren't I? Sorry, those of you who are used to my rather neater watercolour swatches. Um, and I do the pebble swatching, as I call it. Sorry, you haven't had any of that this time because we've got so many to get through. <laughs> so time is, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> A little const, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, night blue, we're, we're lacking time. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this one is the Turner gouache and it is just their normal range. So let's see what night blue looks like. I can see a bit of green there actually. Um, oh, it's nice, look at that. Oh, that's a lovely colour. I would paint a wall that colour. Oh, it's really dark, isn't it actually, when you really get it mixed up. I think it's separated a bit in the tube. Oh, I love it. I was hoping that it would look like this. I wanted something that was really dark and it's actually slightly like a teal, like a really dark teal. Love this colour. I would totally paint a room this colour. Or maybe just a wall. That's nice. Perfect night landscape colour. And as you know, I love my night landscapes. Right, so these ones, now, I got a bit confused when I was ordering these. So I ordered greyish blue, which I didn't have. And then I placed another order, I don't know, a couple of weeks later or something. And I accidentally ordered greyish blue again. I didn't mean to. <laughs> um, as much as I love greyish blue, I didn't want to order two of them. Um, but they came and they're slightly different. So we're going to swatch them both and we're going to see how different they are. So they both appear to be from their regular range, the regular Turner range. Um, and it's strange that they've come in different packaging. So we'll see if they are any different to each other. But I already love it just having squeezed out that tiny bit there. My swatches are getting progressively bigger. Sorry, they're so untidy, it's because I'm at such a strange angle here. You can't see it, it probably doesn't show on camera. I'm much more comfortable doing this one right now. But <laughs> Okay, that's a very nice, what was it, greyish blue? Let's see if the other one is any different or if they are indeed exactly the same. They actually look a little bit different just from that little bit, but we will see. Now, I don't know whether you can tell, but to me, it looks slightly different. I think they might be. We'll wait and see. We'll reserve judgment until they're fully dry. Yeah, we'll wait and see with these ones. Okay, let's go on to the greens. I'm going to start with this one. This is ash green. Now, this is one of my favourite. Oh, too much again. This is one of my favourite Holbein acrylic gouache colours, a lovely muted green. So this for me is a restock because my tube is getting quite low now. 
And this is a colour that I don't want to run out of because I love it so much. It looks very good with the greyish blue and also works really well with misty blue. love that colour. The next one we're going to do is one of the Japanese colours from Turner. This is greyish green. I have to say it doesn't look like very much of a greyish green. It's like a lovely sort of yellow green. Mmm, beautiful colour. And you see little gritty bits in there. I don't know whether you can tell because um, it's one of the Japanese colours. But as I say, I'll hold them up closer to the screen. Oh, this one really is quite gritty. So it kind of gives your paintings a bit of a texture. Now you're either going to like that or not. I didn't think I'd like it. I was a bit worried about it, as I say. But then I ended up quite liking it. It looks striking on the black, doesn't it? Okay, let's stick with some sort of yellow toned greens. Now this is the Holbein Sap Green. I haven't had this one before either. So this is a new one to me. These look really lovely together. As I've said before a million times, or thereabouts. I love how greens look when they're all together. Different shades of green. It just makes me feel good. I guess because it's like being in nature, it like reminds you of being in nature, doesn't it? And green is apparently a very relaxing colour for humans to look at. And I believe there are more shades of green than any other colour. So I heard. <laughs> But yeah, really nice. I like that one, actually. That might become a bit of a staple for me. OK, um, I think the next one we're going to go for is the Holbein Deep Green. Now, this is also one I haven't had before. Very nice. Quite a dark and fairly muted sort of look like that. I love these four greens together. Wow, I could totally use those in a painting together. So I've got all of these from Jackson's, by the way. There's a Jackson's link in my, um, or in the description beneath the video. And if you go to their store via that link, if you're a first time customer, you'll get 10% off your order. And it's an affiliate link, so it means that I earn a little bit from each sale at no extra cost to you. So that's what kind of helps this YouTube channel to be as wide and varied in the art supplies <laughs> as um, it is. Because there's no way I could afford to buy all of these art supplies completely with my own money. So I tend to use my affiliate credit and um, sometimes I put some of my own funds towards it as well. Um, but yeah, that's how I have so many different wonderful art supplies that I can share with you. Um, so if you use that link, thank you so much, because it is a good way of helping this channel out and helping me out as an artist. OK, which one should we do next? Um, I'm tempted to go for what I think is the brighter one, which is grass green. Now, this is the Holbein and I'm going to put that one there, actually. I haven't had this one before and this is because as so many of you will know but some of you won't I didn't really used to use green in my work <laughs> you'll be very surprised to hear go back I don't know two years and you would rarely see green in my work if you did it would be something like the ash green it would be something very muted um, and then I got into using all sorts of different greens and now I absolutely love them and I'm a little bit obsessed with them. So I've spent past, I don't know, a year probably 
sort of trying to amass as many different shades of green as possible across my different art supplies. And uh, yeah, now I have a real appreciation for green. I love it. But that's why I didn't have a lot of these greens because I didn't used to use this kind of um, sort of brighter green. Um, it looks really vibrant on the black, doesn't it? And darker. It looks actually quite muted in a way um, on the white paper. But really vibrant, really stands out on that black paper. Nice. Okay, let's go for this one, which is the Turner Acro Wash. This is from their regular range and it's the Permanent Green Deep. So I'm going to put that one here. Kind of similar to the Holbein Grass Green, I think. Maybe slightly more blue. Blue tone, possibly. Yeah, it's not quite as vibrant on the black paper, is it? Nice. I'm loving all of these, actually. I did wonder whether I might get some I didn't like. Because um, there are some greens I'm not that keen on. I'm actually really liking all of these so far. I'm pleased about that. Okay, so this one is from their regular range, the Turner range, and that's deep green. So let's see if their deep green differs from the Holbein deep green. It's a nice natural green, isn't it? I do think they're all slightly different, aren't they? It's kind of similar-ish to this one, but still slightly different. Of course, you don't need all of these greens. You could very easily mix your own with blues and yellows, but I actually quite like having lots of colours just there ready to use rather than having to mix up colours all the time. I do mix colours. I mix colours fairly often, but I do find it quite inspiring to have lots of colours just ready mixed. Um, which one should we do next? I think maybe let's do Cypress. So this is from the regular Turner range. Now I think this one's going to look quite blue. Um, and that's what attracted me to it when I was looking at Jackson's site. Oh, that's another gorgeous teal colour. Beautiful, wow. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love this one. I still love a blue-green. <laughs> I remember saying once, um, I only really liked sort of muted greens and blue-greens. I still do love them. Okay, we're on to the last one, can you believe? So this is the Turner Acryl Regular Range Greyish Green. Now, this one is one of my most used colours. As you can see, I was waiting for it to come back into stock because I'm using it all the while. So I bought <laughs> three of them because it was out of stock on Jackson's for so long and you can't get bigger tubes. Well, if you can, Jackson's doesn't stock them. So um, because these are quite small, I think they're 20 mil. Yeah, 20 mil. Um, I got three of them <laughs> so I don't run out. So I'm going to show you why I love this one so much. I mean, maybe you won't love it in the way I love it. But to me, it's just such a lovely... Um, sort of, I don't know whether we can call it a dusky green, like a sort of moody grey, well it is greyish green, that's what they've called it. <laughs> I can't describe it any other how. <laughs> sort of slightly like a khaki green, but not quite. Oh, it's lovely. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. So yeah, now I have three tubes, so I won't run out. Be 
because it did take months to come back in stock on Jackson's and I was getting a little bit concerned. But yeah, that's a much loved tube, that one. Still got a little bit in it, so we'll keep going with that one for a while. Um, but yeah, I've got my backups now. Okay, so that's how they look. I'm gonna just leave these to dry for a minute and then I'll hold them up to the camera so you can see them better. So I bet you weren't expecting this. This is a bit of a surprise for this video, but the lovely people at Upcrate offered to send me another art supply subscription box. Now these are mystery boxes, so you never know what you're going to get. So I thought it would be fun just to open it on this video and see what's inside and create some artwork with it as well. Before I forget, I should just tell you that Upcrate have given me a 15% discount code for my subscribers. So if any of you feel inspired to try one of these boxes, go to the description beneath the video and you'll find a link to Upcrate and you'll also find the discount code there as well. I really love the element of mystery with these boxes. You never know what you're going to get and it does encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone. The materials in the box are usually worth quite a bit more than you actually pay for the box. So it's a pretty good deal and it's good for those of you who perhaps feel, I don't know, a bit stuck if you're in a bit of a creative block and you just fancy trying something new, something unexpected. So I'm going to show you what's in the box and then I'm going to create some artwork. Alongside the art supplies, you also receive a magazine in every box. Now this contains inspiration. It tells you a bit more information about the art supplies in the box. And it also tells you all about the featured artist and their work. So let's have a flick through the magazine so you can have a look at what's in this one. There are a couple of things I really like about these boxes. One is that they come with so much information about the art supplies. So if you're unfamiliar with the materials that they've included, you can really get to know a bit more about them. 
And the second thing I really like is that you can choose to work from the tutorials that they give you. Or like I'm going to do here, you can just choose to work on something completely from your imagination, just whatever you're inspired to create with the materials they've given you. So I thought I would just test out the mechanical pencil and the pen and then just really concentrate on working with the paints. I wouldn't normally combine the pen with acrylic gouache paints, so I'm going to use them in the way I normally would to create an autumn inspired artwork. By the way, it was really cold in the studio and we're not putting the heating on, or certainly not yet anyway. So I'm wearing my big fluffy sweater because I had to keep warm. They'd given me just six paints to work with. I had a blue, a yellow, a red, a black, a white and an opera red. I chose not to use the opera red because it isn't light fast. The other colours were light fast um, and I was intending to make something that I might sell. So I wanted it to be light fast. That was important. So I chose just to work with five colours. So obviously I had to do a lot of mixing. My preferred colour palette is much more muted than this. Natural, muted, earthy colours, quite dark colours as well. So I really had to put my mixing hat on and um, yeah, create all of the colours that I wanted to use in this piece. So I'm painting a bonfire scene here and I had in my head an idea of what I wanted it to look like and as I was working on it, it just was going more and more wrong. It didn't look how I wanted it to look. So I'm going to tell you the truth. I actually gave up on this piece. <laughs> well, I have to tell you the truth because there is no finished piece. I got to a certain stage with this. It was beyond the stage that you're going to see it here and I just really didn't like it. So I decided to throw it away and I started again. And I'm gonna show you what I did actually come up with. With these colors, I mixed all of the colors for the piece, as I said earlier. So I didn't cheat, I didn't use my other paints. I used only what they'd given me in this box. And you'll see that in a moment. So after I started again, this is what I came up with. It's actually quite a bit different from my usual work and I don't know whether that was because I was under pressure and trying to use different colours to the colours I would normally reach for, but I quite like it. It's a little bit quirky and um, anyway, I hope you like it too.
so we're finally on to the last two items from the art hall. These were the Derwent palettes, one of which has been recommended to me a few times, the Tinted Charcoal set. And this one, which is the Shade and Tone set, was something that I've seen other people using and I thought just looked really interesting. So you can see you get a palette of 12 colours, a water brush and a little sponge. And this one comes with three pencils, so we'll have a look at those in a bit. But I'm just going to swatch the paints first. In this palette, there are seven ink tents colours, a couple of graphite tints, a couple of tinted charcoals, and also one of their pastel shades in Storm Grey, which I thought sounded like a really lovely colour. I love this set. I think it'll be a really good base for when I'm working in mixed media. I can imagine using it for that more than anything else, really. So perhaps starting with a layer of ink tents or graphite tint and then kind of building on top with coloured pencils or neo colour, um, maybe pens as well. I think these are going to be really useful colours for me. They're very natural, very nature based colours. I love the formulation of the ink tents pans. They're beautiful, they flow really well, and the colours are pretty vivid as well. The tinted charcoals and the pastel shade were more subtle, um, which is really nice, so they do really provide a good base to work on top of. And the storm grey shade is just absolutely beautiful. I think that might be one of my favourites in this set. In this set they give you three pencils, so you get a Derwent drawing in terracotta. Those of you who follow me will know that I love Derwent drawing pencils, they're one of my favourite pencils. So I was pleased to see that in this set. And the other two you get are graphite pencils, so you get the Derwent Onyx in dark and the Derwent Graphic in 3B. And I was a bit confused because these two pencils look very similar. I wasn't sure what the Derwent Onyx was supposed to be. Was it supposed to be different? So I looked it up and here's what they say on their site. They say that it's their blackest graphite pencil, even darker than a 9B. And this just isn't true from what I discovered when I was watching it. You can clearly see here that the 3B is actually, I would say, marginally darker. It's very, very similar to the Derwent Onyx Dark. So this is supposed to be darker than a 9B. And I didn't find that at all. I don't know whether any of you have any experience with these pencils. But if you do, I would love to hear what you think of them. Other than that, this is a really nice little set to have and I would recommend it, certainly for the price. I think it was around £24 at the time I bought it and you can often find them on good deals, on good offers. So definitely worth getting if you really love these colours and you'd like to experiment with some different mediums. 
finally today I'm going to swatch this tinted charcoal paint pan set. So it's a bit like the other one in that you get 12 pans of colour, you get a water brush and the little sponge and there's a mixing palette in the lid as well, uh, which is quite handy when you're out and about. But for this I'm just going to be swatching them. But they're lovely colours, I really like these. They kind of have a charcoal base but they've added a hint of colour to each one. So here they are, a really nice set of muted colours and again, very useful if you want to work on top of them in pen or pencil, really good for mixed media. If you're still with me at the end of this very long video, leave a comment letting me know that you made it to the end and thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video, but in the meantime, if you could give this one a like, if you enjoyed it, that would be great. It really helps my channel when you do that or if you leave a comment and yeah, share it with anyone you think might enjoy it too. Okay, thanks everyone and I'll see you soon.